Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all giving a big middle finger to narcs and I hope you're all supporting the good fight. And if you are in the good fight, I support you and stay safe. So I decided to do a second sort of Q&A, but I was going to do a like ask me anything, but I didn't want the questions to get too personal. So I just did a ask me anything artist edition. So you basically just ask me anything related to art it could be anything related to like drama or just like controversial art topics things that you're like kind of like oh, i'd like to see what her opinion on is on this or like you just ask me anything like what crayons i use or whatever but yeah but before i start the q a i figured i could talk about the artwork i made because i just i love doing that I fucking hate those kids anyway yeah, basically this is a little thing I did a few months ago because I'm like obsessed with my uh, Dungeons and Dragons character and my friend's Dungeons and Dragons character like kind of like having this unrequited kind of situation going on. He obviously likes her. She, we don't know if she likes him or not. That's up to you. That's up to me. But yeah, I, <laughs> I'm like really obsessed with like portraying that relationship or that dynamic and this is my it, well in Dungeons and Dragons uh, my, my character is a clown and he is like super dude bro-y and he's like really chill and I just love him a lot and I've been drawing him a lot and in, in this piece he's I think he's like a businessman <laughs> sometimes I portray him as like a businessman or businessman that wants to quit and he like lives in the bustling city and he's like waiting for the bus and every day he when he waits for the bus this beautiful tiny woman who carries food with her waits right next to him and it's just so romantic and it's like very studio ghibli-esque and you know he sees he sees her and his heart stops he's like oh my god he gets very sweaty because he loves her he, lo he likes her he doesn't love her yet come on he's infatuated and he's like oh what a babe how do i talk to her and yeah anyway <laughs> that's that's pretty much the scene I'm drawing right now and it's just really fun to just dive into that little world also sorry if you hear like screaming out or outside or laughing it's a bunch of kids it's summer I share a backyard with a lot of people nothing I can do about it but yeah there's that on that piece I hope you guys enjoy the process of it while I start talking about some interesting things that you guys ask me let us begin all right, so we'll start with the most controversial one. First question by Buchinyan. Do you like putting filters? Which ones? I like them, but forget to use them. Um, as for Instagram, for Instagram filters, I'd, I think I use Aiden all the time. Aiden and then like the second filter. I forgot what it's called, but yeah, I usually use Aiden. I don't use too much anymore. I used to use it a, like a lot, like 30%. But now I use it like at two percent because I I don't I don't like how much it changes the colors to my art. Um, as for like non Instagram filters, the one I always use is um, the noise filter. I love using noise. I think for I don't like when my art looks too digital, and I really like to give that like traditional kick to it. So noise really helps that. Yeah, it's an amazing filter. I use it all the time. So that's what I use. Classic underscore Pure says, not a question, but I love your art style. It's so fluid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rose Gem asks, or yeah, coloring digitally, drawing with confidence. What color is grape? I, <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I don't know if these are questions or if these are just statements, but coloring digitally that's gonna have to be a whole nother tutorial i would really love to actually i don't know if i want a tutorial but just show you guys how i color digitally i mean you guys see it through speed paints but sometimes even speed paints are go by so fast you don't really learn much sometimes so i would like to make a video going into more depth on how i color digitally drawing with confidence again stay tuned i am doing something for that what color is a grape? It can be purple. 
but it could also be the color of what are those purple things called? Putting henna. I only said I know how to say in Spanish. But eggplant. <laughs> yeah, it could be eggplant, or it could be grape. What's interesting is that grape is also the name of a color. But I digress. All right. Dan's can't draw. I doubt that. Asks. Fave color palettes. Fave artists on IG and YouTube. Favorite color palettes. I think you can see from a lot of my art that I lean towards a lot of warm tones. I love reds, oranges, but lately I've been into greens. But I like warm toned greens. Like the greens that are closer to yellow rather than the greens that are closer to blue. And my favorite artist on IG. I'm gonna say two. There's two artists that I've been really looking into constantly and that's Gigi Cavanago, I think that's how you say it, and another artist named Oreo Oreo Vlock. I love this fucking artist. Their stuff is just it's so good. Like it's I think they do digital work, but their digital work has this like Is it digital? Damn, I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, they do digital work and their digital work has this just this traditional hand to it and that is exactly what I want. Like, like actually both artists have like a traditional kind of hand in their digital work. And that's something that I always try to achieve in my in my stuff. So definitely Gigi and Oreo. Those are my top artists right now on Instagram. And I highly recommend you check them out. As for YouTube, damn. That's kind of hard. I, you know, YouTube's art community isn't really as big. So it's really hard to find artists that like... I'm like, oh my god, I look up to them. But I guess right now, the artist that I really look up to on YouTube is James Gurney. His painting is just like, well, so good. He He's what makes me want to keep doing like traditional watercolors and stuff. He's so good. Highly recommend his stuff. He's he's kind of like a breath of fresh air to me in, in YouTube. So I, I try to be more like him when I make YouTube videos. I just, I love his stuff. Neil B asks, what is something you really struggle with and what is something you are super skilled at? Hmm. I think, let me start with what I'm really good at. <laughs> I think I'm really skilled at, I guess, um, like, um, expressive poses. I think I'm, I'm pretty good at that because it's something that I just really like to do. And I think you could tell that I really like to do it. And I spend a lot of time studying it. So like really expressive body language. I think I'm I think I'm I'm pretty good at that. I could always be better. But so far I'm at a comfortable spot. But usually when I'm comfortable, that's when I'm like, mm, I have to I'm too comfortable, you know. I <laughs> I feel like I have to like keep going. But yeah, I'm pretty confident in my um body language. Something I'm really not good at is well, you guessed it, backgrounds. I'm, I'm fucking really bad at backgrounds. I'm trying... The thing with backgrounds is it's not something that I want to get amazing at, but it's something that I want to get comfortable with. I don't want to be afraid of backgrounds anymore because I feel like I'm really afraid of backgrounds. And, you know, the more I draw people, the more I want to put them in a setting, you know? You can only do a blank thing for so long. And... Like, you know how in this image it has a background, but I feel like I wasn't confident enough and I was still afraid. So I would definitely like to be less afraid of backgrounds and improve in it. Because another thing is I really like to draw, like drawing backgrounds. I can do that. It doesn't look good, but I like to do it. But coloring it is a whole nother ballgame. But yeah, I'd like to get better at backgrounds and colors. I know... I'm grateful for people who like my color palettes and stuff, but I do, I feel like I could, I could always, I don't know, color is always like, I'm always at war with it, so I'd like to, I'd like to get better at colors, but yes, so. Geetrop underscore reborn asks, have you ever published comics? No, I have not. I don't think I'll ever publish comics. I don't think that's, oh god, my mic. I don't, I don't think that's the direction I want to take my stuff to, like publishing comics. I just, ugh, it's just, 
I've seen the comic world. It's a lot of work. And I don't think I have the the balls for that, I guess. <laughs> for lack of a better word. But no, I don't I don't publish comics. I do I should be working on my comic right now though. Krusty Socks asks If you had to only use traditional or digital, which would you choose? Hmm. That's really hard because I love both. <laughs> I like I really like traditional because it's just so unpredictable in results like you could know what you want but there's no 100% guarantee that the lines are going to come out exactly or the colors are going to come out exactly there's no 100% you know um guarantee of that like you don't have as much control as you would in digital art which is why I also like digital art because you have more control but maybe traditional maybe I'll regret that but it's not like I it's not like it's real but you know yeah I guess I'll say traditional because I really like digital art a lot but sometimes digital art makes me feel like I I have to make everything perfect like if I could never do traditional art ever again and I only had digital art I I don't know if I could do that you know because traditional art it makes me feel like it makes me accept my mistakes and just like put it out there and be like all right this is what it is take it or leave it and I feel like I learn a lot more when I do traditional art Charlie R Charlie Arl asks what were some of your early inspirations well my first inspiration was the Powerpuff Girls and personally I don't think I would have I don't think I would be drawing right now if it weren't for the Powerful Girls. That's how much the Powerful Girls influenced like my art. I just remember like seeing it and thinking, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. I have to like, I gotta draw it. And yeah, because of them, I'm just, I've, that's why I, <laughs> I draw. So big thanks to McCracken. Um, and then middle school, I started, I think I mentioned this in another video, but there was this comic called Seize the Day, and it was just, it just gave me that feeling again where I'm like, oh my god, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. And I really loved how the artists like tackled like colors and expressions. And they were the they were the reason why I stopped drawing in like an anime style. But yeah, that artist taught me a lot about character design and shape language and how certain shapes could help. Um, I guess distinguish a character from everyone else and I didn't I didn't understand that before and I wish their art was I could find it but I they just fucking disappeared I'm assuming they're dead but I hope they're not so yeah thank you Wislow if you're out there <laughs> and now here comes the true the true controversial questions hmm Lanaka Art asks least favorite artist slash any artist you dislike I want to keep contemporary artists out of my mouth because I don't, I don't want to stir shit up, <laughs> but you, you know, if you follow me anywhere else, I'm a little bit vocal about certain artists that I don't like, just art wise. I don't, you know, not to be like, Ugh, I don't like this artist because they're like this. I mean, there's some artists that, but anyway. But I will say one contemporary artist. I don't like Bush Hartman's art. I think a lot of people don't like his stuff, though. And I don't blame him because his stuff is. I mean, listen. I know every artist. You know, they they have their own style. They have, they have their own way of doing things. But Butch is like. I feel like he has such an ego, and he's he's already like kind of fucking. He already gets on my nerves a little bit. <laughs> But it's like, dude, this man has been drawing for years and his art, it feels like it just stagnated or something. And it's, I just don't like it. I don't like looking at it. I don't like his color choices. His color choices are, forgive me, but they're atrocious. Like, he uses the worst shade of greens. And I just, mm -mm. I'm sure there's someone out there who likes, who likes his stuff. And that's great, but I don't like his stuff. Ooh, another artist I don't like is Picasso. And I just don't like so he chooses to make like faces ugly. I don't know if I dig it. I can appreciate it. I can appreciate what he does, 
and how he chose to like you know make things look like that but i can't find myself being inspired by it <laughs> andrew palmer asks do you think the ban banana taped to a wall was a valid piece of art no i literally went to the guggenheim and there was like six large paintings about the size of like a wall in the bedroom and they just had horizontal no, vertical lines that's it just everything had vertical lines painted on them and people were just like oh my god this is like this is just truly something man and it's like i just don't agree you know like i don't i'm not saying it's not art stuff like that or like the ban banana on the wall it's not not art but i just don't think it's I don't think it's really anything that has meaning or is even interesting to look at, you know? Like, cause I feel like art is two things, right? Either it has, I feel like art has meaning or it's fucking nice to look at. When it's, when it's neither, it's like, damn, what the, what's the point? That's what I think though, you know, that's just my opinion. But I personally like art that, that, is nice to look at or at least has some kind of meaning behind it like there's abstract art like pollock when i was younger i would look at stuff like his like abstract art and pollock's art and think ugh, what's the point it's not a, a tree it's nothing it doesn't mean anything but when i took an art class and i i you know learned about the history and how at the time stuff like that was very like inventive and different and it you know it was the bee's knees at the time and i can appreciate that i can you know do i like jason pollock's work i actually do like his the visually what it looks like would i have it in my room no but i do like the history behind it i find that very interesting so abstract work from like the 20s and 30s i find it a little more interesting because of the history behind it but it's fucking a banana tape to a wall that's just like it's trash it's just trash to me man i just i'm just like damn like this is how people this to me that that represents like the rich yuppie like upper class white like it's my art and you can't judge it like kind of bullshit Ugh, i hate it <laughs> but yeah I'm, I'm fucking going on a rant but that's how i feel about it that 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 g cook <laughs> asks you ever have those art classes where purely cl classical teaching and wanted to die yeah i fucking i had you know i was actually really lucky that most of my art teachers were very like they were just the bee's knees they were awesome they they let us pretty much make things and but they would still critique us but they wouldn't limit us I had one professor in my freshman year of community college who actually has a YouTube channel, which is weird, so I won't say names, but he made me fucking draw these triangles and squares and circles, and we couldn't use anything but pencils. I absolutely hated his class because it was just it didn't stimulate me artistically at all but like his his homework would consist of like drawing five cubes but like different textures and then something else would be like oh draw this square and shape and with minimal shading and i remember like when i would do the homework and everything i would just not put effort into it because it was just boring like i hated it i hated the classwork because I felt like I wasn't really learning anything and I probably was and I probably would have learned more if I did put more effort into it but it was just so like I, I couldn't stand it like it made drawing boring it made art boring because we couldn't do anything fun and I, I also talked about this in another video but I remember he pulled me aside like right before the semester ended and he was just like you know hey do you even want to be an artist do you even take this seriously and i'm like i was like 19 and i'm like yeah I, yeah of course 
And he's like, you're not trying at all on your coursework. I don't see it in your coursework. And I was like, well, why the f-? I didn't say this part, but in my head, I was like, well, fucking give us something more interesting. Like, it's just not... Who the fuck wants to draw cubes and uh, squares? I'm sorry. Squares and triangles and rectangles. No one wants to do that. He, he wouldn't even let us use other tools. It was just pencils and... I just hated it. He, he was even like, oh, no anime too. And I'm, I'm just thinking like, well, pff, all we're drawing is fucking cubes. So how the hell are we going to have the chance to draw anime anyway? But <laughs> yeah, that class was so fucking bogus, man. I was a brat, but I also wasn't being stimulated artistically. So but luckily, the rest of my art teachers and professors were awesome. You know, my second teacher was or professor, he was he was a hard ass on me, but I did learn from him, you know, and the rest were really chill and I really appreciate them. But that first professor, I'm sorry, it just didn't work out between us. <laughs> well, yeah. DR07 asks, it's ever happened to you that you don't have any ideas all day, all day, all day. And then at 2 a.m., you have a lot of ideas. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's really hard for me to force myself to draw before like 8, 8 p.m. Because that's usually when I when I start to draw because that's the time where things settle down. You know, I'm not being talked. No one talks to me as much in the house. Everyone's doing their own thing. And I, I'm pretty sure that's why it's easier for me. Because before that, the house is just like kids are outside screaming and shit. And it's really hard to concentrate. But. I think it I think you should try and draw at least 7 p.m. if you can cuz I love drawing late at 2 a.m. but then I sleep late and then I'm tired and then I produce less good art. Re 77 asks How do you work in a noisy/busy environment? I have noise canceling headphones and you know with my family they like you know we like to have conversations every now and then i'm like okay cool i talk to them and then after a while you know i say like you know i'm gonna start working on my stuff on my art and they're like okay cool we'll let you be for a little bit sometimes it doesn't work out sometimes i'm drawing and like you know my family's like hey you know what it is and i'm like oh, okay i'm kind of working on something but you know <laughs> but sometimes i I have to tell myself, like, you know, you've probably been drawing for too long anyway. Talk to your sister. Talk to your mom, you know. So I have to I have to work on that. But as for, like, shit, like, outside noises and stuff, I highly recommend noise-canceling headphones. You know, I can't do anything about when I'm recording, but at least when I want peace and quiet to myself, I get the headphones and I start drawing. And that helps a lot. It also helps to find out what are the times where there's the least amount of noise in in your home or in the environment you're in. Like, you hear that? That screaming? Right now is not the good time for me to record, but I don't feel like recording any time later. So I just got to deal with it. And yeah, like for some people, the quietest time is like 2 a.m., if that is the time, the only time where you can, like, do any art where it's quiet, you know, if you can do it, do it. But I highly recommend earlier times. But if that's the only time, then damn, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. It's all about time management, I guess. And just, like, trying to find the pattern of, you know, trying to, for trying to find the pattern to see, like, what are the times that are quiet and what are the times that are the loudest. And that has helped me a lot. But yeah, it's... And also, sometimes you just have to, like, grin and bear it. Sometimes it's just like, you know... Because what what stopped me from making YouTube videos a lot was because my neighbors were so loud. And I'm like, oh, I don't have the equipment. My neighbors are loud. My house is always rowdy. But eventually, I had to just be like, listen, man. It's either you make the video or you don't. It's, It's either you draw or you don't. So... Sometimes you just gotta fucking do it, and it sucks. But, you know, uh, for me, I'm always grateful for making it and doing it and having the results than just being like, oh, I can't do it because it's just loud. 
<laughs> you know also take breaks if you get really frustrated try and take a break and and calm yourself because I, I get very mad when I when it's so loud and I can't do my artwork like I, I can't stand being constantly interrupted so I have to take breaks but yeah I hope I hope that helps a little bit I'm still learning like how to fucking work in these hectic environments but <laughs> yeah lemon grab enthusiast wow I haven't heard that word name in a while lemon grab um asks how long did it take you to develop your, your godly style wow i wouldn't call it godly but thank you that's it's really nice of you to say <laughs> um but it took me years um but in terms of style it, it just comes you know and in terms of i guess how i draw like all the knowledge that knowledge that i've built into drawing that was years 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 i'd say probably over 20 years yeah over 20 years i've been drawing for a long time and it's it's just all about you know keeping on you know i think now we have so much more so much more resources than we did before so if you really if you really want to develop a style you know it's very easy to these days like there's so much like visual so many so many visual libraries out there it's like insane but yeah i i, I developed mine I guess by just looking at things i liked the movies i liked and yeah i don't know that's a hard thing to explain because i never um i hadn't i haven't i hadn't been one to worry about my style since high school i'd say like i still worry about how it looks but i never worry about like damn what is my style what is my like signature style like it's like eh. I, I i'm a firm believer that everyone has their own style and they just gotta like unlock it i guess Does that makes sense i just got I, I feel like i contradicted myself but <laughs> yeah that's that's my answer now for my favorite question vixel p second asks what inspired you to make kadinsky oh i love this question because i love kadinsky um if you don't know if you skip the beginning where i explained the um character <laughs> kadinsky is the clown guy in this painting he is my Dungeons and Dragons character. There was a time where Dungeons and, Dra Dungeons and Dragons was really, really big. I still, think, I still think it's pretty big, but it was really hype when Stranger Things came out and all that. And my friends who already played Dungeons and Dragons were like, hey, why don't we play it? And I'm like, cool, cool. So we made our own characters and, you know, you had the, the strength characters, the elf ones. And I'm like, well, I want a clown character because I really like clowns. And they're like, that's disgusting, Jay, don't do that. And I'm like, please. Then they're like, okay, fine. So, so I made a clown character, and I was also really obsessed with Keanu Reeves. And I'm like, oh man, I really want him to be like Keanu Reeves from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. So he's heavily based off of Ted Theodore from the first movie. All we are is dust in the wind, dude. specifically the first movie visual wise because he has that that set almost like 1970s hair kind of thing going on but he's also inspired by brandon boyd circa 2003 ish he's basically an amalgam of my type of guy that i like you know stupid i don't want to say stupid but yeah stupid um very like dude you know like oh man like kind of cali like very sweet kind of um i guess kind of a hopeless romantic as well yeah very hopeless romantic um yeah i just th those are just like those are elements i really like in a guy <laughs> so i put it in kadinsky and I i'm usually not into making ocs but i just really you know i guess when you play him because i had to play as him and when you play as them you kind of grow an attachment to them yeah, basically my love for clowns and Keanu Reeves and men fashion and hairstyle from the early 2000s has inspired me to make Kadinsky. And I'm really happy with the kind of character he's become. And I can't wait to draw him more. <laughs> Spaggot or Spaggot asked, how are you? I love your icon, by the way. It's so fucking like, it's great. How are you so good at drawing Bill and Ted? Eww, I like that face. I well thank you 
and I just really love Bill and Ted like when this happens to a lot of artists when you really 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 like something and you just draw it so many times you start to like understand like how they're how they're basically I like to say character design even though they're 3D people they I started to draw Bill and Ted a lot and not that much did it maybe I did draw a lot I don't know but I drew them enough times to be like okay I can I can understand what makes Bill look like Bill and what makes Ted look like Ted. But what also really helped me a lot was looking at um, this artist called Gorilla Prook. His work is just fucking insane. Like he 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 used to do a lot of Bill and Ted fan art a few years ago, like from 2016 to 17. It's so good. Like I, I have to show you guys it, but like look at it. It's fucking amazing. And he he just had this way of capturing Keanu and Alex Winter and it's like if you see like he didn't make them look exactly like them but it looks like them and I look at his stuff a lot to, to like think like how can I how can I do the same thing without completely like copying how he does it so it's it, yeah looking at always look at other artists like look at other artists see how they interpret it and then you can come up with your own interpretation because even if you copy them it's not going to look like theirs which you don't want it to look like theirs anyway but that and watching the two movies back to back helps too <laughs> Kastrelik asks opinions on those do and don't art tutorials emphasis on the um, quotations on art tutorials now that I think about it I, I guess the language of do this and don't do that can seem very restricting personally I just kind of block those things and I'm like eh because some of them are very helpful some of them are not but yeah but like the stuff with like the um, the bodies and stuff that can have some negative that can have negative results and I know the person probably doesn't mean to but it's like uh, yeah it has some negative results um yeah i'm pretty sure they use those that word do and don't is it's just a way to get clicks because it's easier to say draw this don't draw that and you know it's easier to say that instead of this is how you draw an eyeball this is the correct way like you know like it's it's just it's like inflammatory words i guess it's all about getting the al algorithm to obey you that's it i feel like those kinds of tutorials i don't even know if i want to call them tutorials they don't feel like tutorials they just feel like you know uh kind of like quick little tips in a way and i know they don't mean to have like they, they don't have malicious intent behind them but i do think they can breed pretty negative results because a, a lot of the times at least from instagram the people i see doing the do's and don'ts or even on youtube it's like the way they draw is so stylized <laughs> it's like i don't know if even your version of the correct quote unquote version is accurate and what i'd say stuff like that doesn't really give get me heated what really gets me like kind of irritated is the anatomy ones because it's oh god it's a you know personally just anatomy tutorials in general like they just I, mean, I i roll so much at them because i just feel like they're so limiting they are so limiting there's so much more to anatomy than what you see on tv and yes even anatomy books made in the 1950s there's so much more to that like how many times are we gonna learn how to draw a skinny 90 pound girl how many times i think we all know how to do that now with the amount of fucking like tutorials we've seen of that but yeah like, all right. anyway the do the do this and don't do this whatever tutorials they're they're more annoying than anything but yeah chroma key asks how do you come up with ocs that's a good question because i usually don't i the only ocs i i have that i actually like created that I still draw <laughs> are the ones from my comic, the two girls, Yuko and is Yuko right? Yeah, Yuko and Garo. Those are the those characters from my comic and Kadinsky. 
that's pretty much it. That's all I do. That's the only OCs that I made that I carry no control. And it's, I feel like I'm not really in the place to like answer this because I'm not really an OC person. I love making fan art. I'm like obsessed with fan art. But I guess how I made them was I took a lot of inspiration from real life. Like it's just stuff I like. Like from my, my girl OCs, I just like shit from the 70s. And I just like looked at girls from the 70s and what their fashion looked like. And then I just based it off that. And same with uh, Kadinsky. Kadinsky is interesting because his fashion is based off of things that I wear when I don't care. When I just put anything on, I'm like, oh man, this is ugly. And I'm like, oh, Kadinsky would wear this. And then I would draw like him wearing it. All of Kadinsky's clothes, ex clothes, except for the suit, the fancy suit, are based off of clothes that I already wore. So that's another thing. I base a lot of the stuff I base is off myself. Is it narcissistic? Maybe, but I think a lot of artists do that. They 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 make characters based off themselves. Like I think that's not a bad thing either. That's where you start. And sometimes these people base their characters off other people too. So. Yeah, just take take inspiration from anywhere you can get it and just put it in there. Trust me, if you you do that and you're going to find yourself like constantly adding, adding or taking away and then eventually you'll have something you like. JFK Cake asks, <laughs> I love that name, asks, are you working on a comic right now? Yes, yes I am. As I mentioned before, the aforementioned ladies, um... I'm working on a comic that's based off of the 1970s and they're like a monster that terrorizes New York City and I'm really excited about it but I'm still I'm like so slow about this comic. This comic has constantly been put on the back burner but I've determined that this is the year that I get some more work done and I am happy to say that I've been working more on the scripting. I just need to like stop being afraid of drawing it that's what i'm really afraid of i'm not afraid of writing it and all that shit i'm afraid of drawing it but you know i'll never learn unless i do it so that's one of my goals is to continue my comic because it's supposed to be a short comic but it's taking way longer i started this comic like two years ago so the mighty jackie asks what's your go-to when you have art block and really want to draw and warm up this is, I feel like every day, when I'm gonna start, every day is hard for me to start drawing. The hardest part is always starting. So, what I always do is I just, like when I'm just like, I, I really wanna just loosen up. I always do body studies. So I open up Crocus Cafe on Vimeo, and bam, I go right to it. And it always helps me, cause you only have like a minute to draw a body. There's no time to think, there's no time to worry about how it looks, and oh my god, it's inaccurate, you just gotta draw it. And I do that for a good 30 minutes, I think, and that helps me drastically warm up. Another thing I also do is I just draw, I think I, I do studies of like, screenshots of things I like, like whether it be like an Incubus concert or a Keanu Reeves interview or whatever, anything where I'm like, oh, I like the colors there, I wanna do that. I do it because I think studying should be fun. I think warming up should be fun. No one wants to warm, at least for me, I don't like warming up by doing scribblies and stuff. I just, just ugh, puts me to sleep. <laughs> but I like to do lots, I love studies. So also because studies, you always have the reference there. And if you mess up, you can fix it because you have your reference. So I highly recommend studies. That's what I always do. Cristalia asks, Hi, Cristalia. <laughs> Give your most controversial art opinion. <laughs> Eyeball emoji. See, this one, I'm very, this is the last question of the day, and I'm very excited to answer this because I, all right, I don't think this is the most controversial opinion, but I feel very strongly about this. I, and this is all an opinion. I, I'm not going to state it as a fact. This is all my opinion. I hate, I hate, I hate drama art videos. And I'm not talking about people who are talking about drama in like the art community. That's a whole nother beast. But I feel like that community died down. But <clears throat> thank God. <laughs> but I'm talking about 
artists who literally have a speed paint and they just talk about any old shit like they have a speed paint of like a princess who's saving a frog and they're like here's my opinion on kim kardashian and why she sh needs to stop existing and i'm like what the fuck why are you i don't i don't care about this why are i don't all right because <laughs> sometimes the art is really nice and i'm like i want to hear you talk about the art piece can you tell me about the art piece can you tell me like what inspired you to make it how long did it take you to do it did you have trouble doing it like tell give me you're giving me nothing babe you're giving me nothing and it, it just it infuriates me that's why when when i whenever i start a video i like to talk about art because it's something i love to hear about and some people apparently don't like that they don't care but i care <laughs> you know i wish more artists would do that in these at least in these videos but they don't they just like all right here's my thoughts on the bullshit and it's like i don't i don't know i feel like these artists who literally just make a drawing just so they could talk about like pop culture drama and shit oh i hate it i absolutely hate it i can't stand it i feel like it's such a waste of a fucking great speed paint and sometimes like some sometimes these people sound like such assholes like i don't know if you're gonna make a fucking like drama video at least make it art related no some some of these guys like it's like i'm like dude you might why don't you just put yourself in front of the camera and and, and do what you really want to do you know <laughs> you know actually like like d'angelo d'angelo wallace like I'm, no, no offense to him but i really personally i really liked it when he talked about art stuff and when he did speed paints but i do like that he at least was like you know what i'm not talking about art related stuff anymore i'm talking about a whole bunch of other shit so what he did was he kind of changed his whole platform he is now in front of the camera just talking about stuff and i'm like yeah okay fine i prefer that over him making this like this beautiful landscape and then talking about fucking kylie jenner's lip jobs like it, it just it, it's so tacky to me and yeah like i yeah i get really mad when i see artists like just going off about shit that's not even about the art like maybe i sound like an old man but i want to know about your art i don't want to know about whatever bullshit you're gonna talk about and ugh. or another thing is when they talk about really personal stuff like clickbaity stuff like it's like a drawing of sailor moon Oh my god, I got tricked into joining a cult. What? This story is probably fake or it's really inflamed in the title. Like, it's just... Ugh. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's nasty. But again, this is my opinion. People probably love that shit and they eat it up. I don't like that shit, though. That's, that's definitely one opinion that I... I don't know if it's controversial, but I feel so strongly about it. Maybe it is yeah anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video it's not supposed to be anything grand grandiose grandiose i don't know what that name word is grandiose but um i just wanted to i kind of wanted to talk to you guys sort of you know like not talk to you guys in real time but i just wanted to talk to you guys in and i think i realized i hate hearing myself talk for a long time but yeah I'll still do it though in the future. I'll just like probably take less questions or take more breaks in between. But yeah, just let me know what kind of video you'd like in the future or if you want more of these talky type videos. Yada yada yada. See you next time. I love you. Take care of yourself.